So far, we've created a simple MM1 queue. We've extended that to be a multi-server queue. We've extended that to be a multi-server multi queue sharing resources. Now we have a fairly sophisticated system, which is not exactly MM1 or MM2 or anything else I can model with basic queuing theory. And so the next step is to figure out how to get information out of this or, or how to take information from this uh, and deliver it, to, uh, deliver it to other parties. So there are three ways I want to go about doing that. The first way is just using visual cues, using animation to convey some sense of what's going on. The second thing I want to do is I want to introduce the notion of activity-based costing. And in particular, what we're going to do is we can assign a cost to our waiting times. And we're going to calculate average cost. We're going to average those costs, which is going to be synonymous with average waiting time. The third thing we want to do is we want to get those get those statistics across multiple simulation runs so we can talk about confidence intervals and predictions of average values. So let's do those three things in turn. First, to get some visual cues as to what's going on, remember we had this uh, select item out block that sends the female patients one way, the male patients another way. So we can give some visual representation of that by changing the animation. So for example, since we can change these to a two-dimensional picture and I'll choose uh, person F which means person female which will use this little icon here for the male patients I'll change that to not surprisingly person M so I have a little icon of a male patient here now when we run this we will get uh, the male patients going one way and you'll see female patients going in the other direction. And again, that's just to give some visual clue as to why these two lines have been separated and so on. Now, in order to talk about cost data, we need to do three things. Number one, I'm going to add a couple of blocks from the item menu, one being the cost by item block. And uh, let me put add, let me add that into my system here. And again, I'm just going to insert that directly into the flow. So customers are come, going to come off the end of a line here, and we're going to calculate a waiting cost for them. Now, in order to do that, I need to make a couple of alterations to my system here. First, back in the create block. I need to tell the system that we're going to define waiting cost. In this case, we'll make it just a dollar a minute or a penny a minute or whatever you like. One, uh, one unit of cost per time unit. The next thing I need to do is I need to calculate a rate for the waiting cost. And I'm going to go back to the set item attribute block. And remember, we used that before to give each item an attribute which we named gender. But I could actually give that item as many attributes as I like. And the way I do that is I click click here on the lower right hand corner of the table and I make it a table of two rows instead of one. And this new attribute is going to be a rate which is one of the default choices that you have uh, when you create an attribute value. And we're going to give it a value of one. So waiting for a minute cost you one dollar. Now here we're just going to track waiting cost and the way I do that is I click on each of my two cues and on the options tab I'd simply click on calculate waiting cost. I'm going to do that for both of my cues. Okay now what's going to happen is when I run this this block is going to calculate the waiting time or the waiting cost which is the same value in this case for every item that goes through here. It will also uh, it, it will track each individual cost and it will also track the average so I can get the cost for the current or the last customer that went through there or I can get the average cost across that simulation run. Now what I want to do now is a bit more sophisticated. Uh, instead of just getting an average cost across that particular run, I want to come up with an average cost across a large number of runs. And to do that, I'm going to go back to the value menu and I'm going to select the mean and variance block. 
I'm simply going to connect the average cost tab from the item cost block to my mean and variance block. Then I'm going to open that guy and I'm going to go down here I'm going to click on calculate for multiple simulations. And what that will do is on the results tab it will get a mean waiting time for every time the simulation runs. This mean and variance block will then average the mean waiting times across multiple simulations of that and it will give me confidence intervals in this case a 95 percent confidence interval around that prediction. Now this really only makes sense if we're going to run this multiple times. So now we need to go back up to the the simulation setup menu and we need to do two things. First, under random numbers, I'm going to take out that value of 7 and just put in a value of 0, which is the equivalent of putting no value at all. And then under setup, instead of running this one time, I'm going to run it, say, a thousand times. And if I've done everything correctly here, what will happen when I click run now is this simulation will run a thousand times. It will calculate the average waiting time each of those thousand runs and it will average those values and give me a confidence interval around those values. So let's, we want to look at the results tab of our mean and variance block. We'll turn off the animation to speed things up quite a bit here. And we'll, what's happening is this is actually running a thousand times. We're up to a hundred now, a hundred and fifty and so on. And we're coming up with an average waiting time for jobs that, or entities that make their way through that system. And we are averaging those averages ultimately across a thousand simulations. And we're doing that so that we can get our confidence interval to be uh, as small as we like. What we should end up with here is something around 16 minutes with a confidence interval of about 0.8. Uh, okay, 16.6 minutes with a confidence interval of about 0.86. So what we've done here is we've reported or we have shown our results in three different ways. One, visually, just by using animation to give the viewer some sense of what's going on. Two, we're using activity-based costing to come up with waiting time costs for each item that goes through here. And then three, we are averaging those costs across multiple simulations to get a very good idea about what the average waiting time is going to be. On each individual simulation run, I could actually go back in and I can look at the waiting time of uh, every each of the 30 customers that went through this uh, run of the simulation. Uh, and again, if you like, or oh, one last thing I'll show you before we leave, if you like, you can actually take this, you can click here, you can use control C and you can take this table and you can paste it directly into Excel if you like uh, to do to do more sophisticated analysis if that's what you have in mind so again we've actually come a long way we've come from an MM1Q to an MM2Q to an MM2Q sharing resources to an MM2Q sharing resources gathering waiting time data and coming up with confidence intervals for our predictions of waiting times across a thousand simulations that's more than enough to get you started for the first little uh, team-based activities that we have uh, using simulation. Uh, we will get more, a few more topics before we get to the end of the, end of the semester, and those will be posted later. Thank you.